Chirak. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Sai Shruti Chukula. I'm a doc doctoral student from Purdue University. I'm presenting this paper on behalf of the UX Pedagogy and Practice Lab, and my co-author is Jason Breyer, a former undergraduate student at Purdue, who is now a designer at Deloitte Digital, and Colin Gray, uh, whose talk you have listened to the first paper. In this talk, I will explore methodological issues relating to value identification and awareness, building upon previous value-focused methods. I will introduce a new method called ethicography that allows uh, researchers to map value discovery and activation over time. Numerous framings of ethics and values have been explored in the HCI community and beyond in the last two decades. Many methods and research approaches to design uh, like critical design, reflective design, and adversarial design take on an ethical standpoint, but these efforts have historically been largely focused on the development of scholarship. Our work in this paper primarily focuses on the everyday practice of UX design and related ethical aspects. We build upon methodological work and practice-oriented forms of engaging with ethics at the intersection of design, HCI, and SDS literature. In the context of this paper, we build upon existing value-related approaches while prioritizing practitioner-oriented perspectives on the situational quality of ethics and values. But to achieve this, we have to look into the methods that can let us discover these ethical complexities in decision-making. In the design literature, many methods have looked at minute-by-minute -minute design decision-making or idea generation. But little has been done to look at design cognition through an ethical lens. Similarly, STS and HCI literature has sought to engage designers, researchers, and technologists in value-based design and implementation. Currently, these methods provide designers support for dealing with values in design in a process orientation, but there are noticeable gaps in support for value discovery, guidelines for understanding selection of relevant values, exploration and deconstruction of specific values, and evidence of how the values have been successfully translated into design. By taking a practice-led approach, we intend to build upon prior work to create a new methodological space to address these barriers. With this lens in mind, we have two main aims for this paper. The first being to explore methodological issues relating to value identification and awareness building upon previous value-focused methods. The second aim is to describe how designers collaboratively operationalize and interact with values through specific exemplars to illustrate the outcomes possible through the method proposed in this paper called ethicography. To describe, analyze, and reveal value discovery during design activity in sufficient detail. We used lab protocol study approach to document the discussions and design activities of student designers. Each protocol session had three participants. Each session was one hour in duration, including the introduction of an authentic task that required participants to navigate an ethically ambiguous space working on the design task for 45 minutes, and the presentation of design outcomes with follow-up questions from the researchers. We have conducted protocol studies with two different design tasks. In total, we conducted eight sessions, four for each design task, with a total of 24 participants. We recruited three participants for each protocol session, drawing from our undergraduate and graduate students at our institution with a background of U in UX or interaction design. All the sessions were video recorded and transcribed for a data analysis. As mentioned, we had two design tasks for the protocols. In the first protocol study, we provided an altruistic task to shape end users' behavior for a good cause, asking the participants to redesign a donation experience for Houston-based charity following the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. In the second protocol study, we provided a more capitalist-oriented task that was less ethically nuanced, asking the participants to redesign a shopping experience for an online drugstore that explicitly asked the designers to manipulate end users into purchasing store-banned pharmaceuticals more frequently. 
We used an interaction analysis approach to identify connections between speech acts, artifacts, and paralinguistic qualities. Initial sequence analysis of these interactions facilitated our awareness of how teams collaborated, the methods they used, and the types of design solutions they produced. However, the interaction analysis did not allow us to directly identify how participants engaged with values in their design work. To address this gap, we propose a method combining a well-known method called linkography and meaning reconstruction techniques to propose a new method called ethicography. This method is one of the main contributions of this paper, enabling researchers to elicit and decode value awareness and discovery as it occurs in design decision making, using a qualitative and temporal approach to inter interrogate design team interactions. First, I'll provide a brief description of the linkography method that we built upon. Linkography provides a means of visualizing the iterative nature of design activity and decision making. And describing how design decisions are built upon knowledge that is continuously being foregrounded and backgrounded of the design team. This is one of the best known analytic approaches for revealing the inherent recursion and iterative nature of design activity, where primary generators, constraints, and other forms of shaping judgments occur, are then backgrounded and then reoccur. This method, standalone, made it difficult for us to reveal people's value orientations. So we found potential in a methodological intervention and questioned ourselves how to make et linkography ethically focused. Through our thematic analysis of the nature of speech acts, we found two major emerging themes, which we termed as a value code and an idea code. We defined a value code as the likely intent of the speech act that would represent the participant's tacit or explicit attitude towards one or more values. This varied in a spectrum of design acts from being ethically sound to being manipulative. We also categorized an idea code for each speech act, building on common design activities described in previous design cognition studies. This code identifies the relation of the speech act to a problem, solution, intended behavior, or the decision rationale. The application of these two codes enabled us identify the value orientations of the designers alongside design outcomes or decisions. To make linkographs more ethically sound, these codes are marked as layers over the links created among the speech acts of the participants and were iteratively determined by performing meaning reconstruction on key segments to identify how implicit values might inform explicit design outcomes. To quickly summarize the method we used to create ethicographs, step one, we unitized all speech acts in our transcripts by giving them a code, participant pseudonym, and making sure it represented any conversational terms. Step two, for each speech act, we applied a value code to represent its value orientation. This was color coded for blue towards being more value centered decisions and orange towards manipulative moves. The step three, apply a idea code to speech act to identify the kind of design outcome it indicates. And the step four forms links between the speech acts to represent the relationships. Following this method through the 45 minutes of the design task for one session, here is how an ethicograph would look like, which represents the layers that we introduced to understand designers' attitudes towards values and corresponding idea codes. Temporal aspect of the design decision making, which when combined with the links, will help researchers understand how value orientations of designers activate throughout the session. Using this method, we move forward to achieve our second aim, to understand how designers collaboratively operationalize the, and interact with values through specific exemplars to illustrate the outcomes possible through ethicography. From the ethicographs created for each session, the value codes layer aid, uh, aided us in operationalizing and interacting with value relationships implicit in all design decisions, increasing our knowledge of how values are performed in the design activity. Analysis of the relationships of values to each other or over time are possible using ethicograph method, but are outside the scope of this paper. 
The related idea codes uh, help identify any concrete solutions related to the value applied or traded off. The values were adapted a priori from Friedman. While solving the given task to increase the conversion rate by any means necessary, we identify the following user values that were explicitly or implicitly considered by the designers. Right to information, usability, security, flexibility, automation, optimization, trust, and aesthetics. For the second design task, where designers were asked to manipulate users to increase the sales of the store brand on, the drug, on a drugstore website, the most commonly discussed human values that were inscribed into these solutions included right to information, human welfare, usability, and ownership. Right to information, participants in multiple teams identified that there was a lack of information on the existing page, and redesign was required to present the information to, on the website that could attract donors and maximize the conversion rate. As a result, this user value was considered the most essential by participants in the first protocol study in maximizing the conversion rate. This value was translated into by the participants into various aspects of the final solutions, including infographics, information graphics, statistics, descriptive text, user stories, and images. One such example of value application that the ethicograph helped reveal is shown here. This example shows how we could analyze design solutions started with a good intention, but we also observe that an ethicograph will help us understand the related value trade-offs and show us when a good intention turned evil, as shown in the ethicograph here. It shows how a designer expressed the seed idea of giving more information about the hurricane, which was dormant for a while, and emerged again as a developed and concrete solution in the form of implementing progress path, which in a further link uh, shows the good intention to provide information to the users on the donation site turning evil, expressing that these progress bars are actually implemented to create an urgency and action from the users to donate more money. So using similar method of trying to understand the links in the ethicograph, we observed that design activities shaped by this value generally resulted in positive user-centered outcomes, although several of these design solutions also expressed a darker form of persuasion or gentle manipulation, in the previous case in the form of progress bars, for users to donate to the charity. Another such example uh, for presenting images of value uh, visuals of the hurricane, a form of providing information to the users on the site, was to toy or play with users' emotions to encourage them to donate for the charity. So through this work, we would like to bring two main points of discussion. Um, expanding situated knowledge of pragmatist ethics and use. From a cross-case analysis between the two protocol studies, it is observed that frequently used values in one task were not necessarily salient in another task and operationalized into different solutions based on the task and the designer's reflectivity, which gives us an insight into the contextual and situational variables. These cases, in conjunction with the reconstruction that ethicography facilitates, allows deep insight into the value-dense design complexity that pervades design activity. This shows potential of methodological expansion for pragmatist ethics, rather than using ethics as, and values as handcuffs or prescriptions. As seen, the interplay of values and design decisions were leveraged with intentions only to persuade the users towards the stakeholder goals. The findings from this method allow us to explore the ethical design complexity present in design activity, including the ways in which manipulative or persuasive intentions may be shaped by organizational, societal, or stakeholder forces. In conjunction with the findings from our paper earlier in the session on ethical mediation, we are able to describe and analyze in detail the individual and socio-cultural forces that impact design activity having identified such ethical complexities that exist during design decision-making, we propose the need for additional methods required to describe and engage with values in design process. Moving forward, 
As much as there are uptakes for UX pedagogy, additionally, we can look into role analysis, uh, describing different ethical roles and responsibilities taken by the designers during the idea generation and subsequent design activity. Decoding ethicography computationally, revealing patterns over time among team members with similar or differing disciplinary backgrounds. And discourse analysis, focusing at, focusing at qualities of discourse that allow ethical conversation to arise or to be suppressed. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of undergraduate researchers on the UXP2 team, with particular thanks to Ria Manocha uh, for her assistance in data collection and early analysis. We would also like to acknowledge the support of the NSF, and now I'm open for questions. Eva Hornecke, Bauhaus Universität Weimar. Um, in your coding scheme, how would you deal with value change over time when, for instance, one value might be explicitly exchanged with another one that's contradicting it or when participants might redefine um, how they understand a particular value? Uh, so basically the links that you create through the ethicograph, which actually tells you about the change over time, the temporal aspect of things, would help us identify these kinds of changes, but then the value identification would be very qualitative in terms of how you would uh, decode the speech act. With, with, uh, with your graph, you would see that the lines would stop, but that there's another one that's basically the complementary or the opposite, mm -hmm. and that the two are related, that there's, there's been a switch. Um, so from the graph, we would just try to identify whether it's a value center or a manipulative uh, move, but to understand the variations in the values that are being uh, accessed in the whole uh, decision-making, it should be probably qualitatively reconstructed through the speech act uh, rather than the graph giving the direct information about it. Wonderful paper. Bill Heffley from UT Dallas. Uh, quick question about your experimental design. Could you, could you describe how you assigned the students? Did they do one scenario first and then the other, or were they all independent? Oh, no. So we had two different protocol studies. Um, so the first protocol study was about the charity donation. We had three students for each session, and then there were four sessions in each protocol study. So they were separate. Uh, there were 12 students who uh, participated in the first protocol and 12 in the second. So they were completely different, and they were randomly assigned in a group uh, from our undergraduate and graduate student list. Okay, Doug Svane, Anthony in Norway. Could you reflect a little bit on sort of validity problems here with your experiments? Because, I mean, you stated explicitly that they should be manipulative, yeah. which is not the case in the real world, because nobody tells you, sort of, but it still happens. And then you used students who are not part of any sort of uh, uh, community of practice. And, it's the, in, and in this case also, it's the designers making the decisions. And in the real world, the decisions are often not made by designers, etc., etc., etc. So have you sort of reflected on how this um, validity problems uh, sort of... Uh, how you should interpret your, your results then in light of this... Uh, Validity questions. Sure, that was the first question we always had in mind before designing uh, this whole uh, setup. But we were trying to see how much of a, we were giving them authentic tasks that they would have to deal with in any kind of agency that they might work with. And in terms of how they were not explicitly, they might not be explicitly told about these kinds of uh, design decisions that they have to take. Uh, if you've we have observed these in the other sessions, like even in the ethical mediation paper, where the stakeholder was explicitly telling them to constrain the user. So I think these different kinds of aspects would actually provide validity to how we have presented the design task, but then that is also a question that we've continuously kept in mind to, while we are doing the research design. Okay. Thank you.
Let me just add on to that real quick. We did also model all three of the lab protocols. There's one that's not mentioned here on specific scenarios that had ar arisen from previous field work and from interactions with practitioners. Thank you, Shruti.